Okay, so it's been about 72 hours since the release of this new giant boss raid for Dormammu and in that time I fought and defeated Dormammu with about 25 or 30 different characters over the past three days I would say at least at least 50 clears I've gotten in against Dormammu and in that time I've learned quite a bit and I'm still having a lot of fun against this guy. Looking forward to the next few months of playing him with different characters, different team combinations. This is truly one of the greatest additions to Marvel Future Fight for me personally. However, I know for some of you guys, you're still struggling. You haven't gotten your first clear yet. You're trying to figure out what you can do to enhance your gameplay and possibly get to that point where you can get your first clear or maybe you can get one clear but you're looking for tips and tricks to help you get an additional clear so you can start collecting more of these books of Ashanti or more souls of the Falteen. So today, instead of giving you guys different gameplay videos of me clearing him, what I wanted to do is give you some tips and tricks that I've learned over playing him for the past three days. And I'm sure there's more for me to learn, but for now, I'll give you guys what I've learned because it's working for me and it could be working for you as well. Because here's the thing, when you're losing and you're getting frustrated, a lot of times you might not be thinking straight. So some things that may be obvious to me may not be obvious to you. And the same goes for me. Some things that might be obvious for you might not be obvious for me. So I've learned quite a bit from my Alliance members and I've learned some things by myself. Shout out to the homie John. Anytime he learns stuff, he always pass it on and I always do the same. Love you, brother. So let's jump into it, guys. We're gonna give you about 10 to 15 different things that you can do to help you get better at taking on Dormammu and getting your first clear or getting additional clears each day because here's the thing. The drop for the book is random. Today took me 11 runs to actually get the book John had to come through a couple of times and help me. So yeah, that's very, very important to, for you to know that the book drop is not guaranteed on your first run. The first three days, I got the book within my first two or three clears. I believe day one and day two, I got the book right away, but today it took me 11 runs. I was like, yo, I was getting fed up. Even John was like, was like, yo, what's going on? And he gave me a few tips and I tried it and it worked for me. So hopefully if you're having struggles getting the book, that could help you as well. But we'll get to it in due time. Let me just go ahead and say this. This boss fight is very difficult. A lot of you guys are frustrated with the difficulty of this boss fight, but understand one thing. This piece of content was created with the future of Marvel Future Fight in mind. And the future is level 80 and tier 4 characters. Currently, a level 80 Iron Man is completely obliterating stages 40 and 50 in World Boss Legend. And he's not even at tier 4 yet. Keep that in mind, right? Something that he could not do at level 70, just those 10 extra levels, is making him an absolute menace. So with that in mind, you can just imagine the level of power that he's gonna have a tier four. And that level of power is what was in mind when they developed this piece of content. This is for tier four and level 80 characters. That's why it's so difficult, okay? However, there are about 30, maybe 40 characters in the game that are really, really strong. They were way ahead of their time. Characters like Makari, Doctor Doom, Thena, you name it. I have a list of them I'll share with you guys later on. Maybe this video, depending on how long it runs, that can actually do really, really well against Dormammu. But let's get into the top tips that I've learned so far, okay? The first thing I'm going to tell you guys, you're probably not going to want to hear this because this is a long term mission. You're going to need to actually work on your comic cards. Do not expect to be going into future content, future content without actually putting in the work to developing the fundamentals of Marvel Future Flight. I say it all the time. Your comic cards are the foundation of your roster. They're the backbone. If you're building a house, they're the groundwork, the framework. You need to have good cards. And what I've noticed by talking to free to play and paying players alike, you need to have about 8% pierce on your cards and approximately 100% overall attack. Meaning right here for me, I have 111% all attack and then I have 
31% physical and 40% energy. Add that all up, I have 142% physical and 151% energy. That's 50% more energy attack than I would need and 40% more physical than I would need. And I have 25% pierce. That's like, what, 17% more than I would need to be able to clear Dormammu. I've been talking to a bunch of people free to play and paywalls alike. And they've been telling me what their stats look like, what their builds look like. And it seems like a nice spot to be in to actually be able to compete. Go in, do 30 to 40%. You want to have about 100% overall attack on your cards and about 8% pierce. The pierce matters because it ignores some of Dormammu's defense. But do keep in mind that in the second portion of the fight against Dormammu, he's actually going to reduce your pierce by 50%. So having high pierce does help, but having high all attack matters more than the pierce. Let me just go ahead and say that. Moving on, you want to pay attention to the typing on the boss. Like today, for example, Dormammu is a universal type. What I've noticed quite a bit from playing with random people is they don't pay attention to this left side of the page that says Dormammu is universal, increased damage when using universal characters. On any given day, he's a different type. So if it's a speed day, you want to use combat characters. If it's a combat day, you want to use blast characters. If it's a blast day, you want to use speed characters. You want to use the characters that have an advantage against the boss to make your life less difficult. I cannot begin to tell you how many people I've seen sending me screenshots saying they're struggling when they're using type disadvantage characters against the boss. Keep in mind that every 24 hours, the typing of the boss will change. So you need to pay attention. Another thing that you guys need to pay attention to is the type enhancement on your characters a lot of you guys don't upgrade the type enhancement on your characters but this could give you up to 60 percent more damage against the boss guys for example if i go to somebody that i have a type 6 i believe my falcon is a type 6 i'll just show you guys on him on a blast day i would be doing 60 percent more damage to the boss and i would be taking 45% less damage from the boss. So you want to upgrade the typing on your character because every little bit of extra damage that you can squeeze out against this boss matters because this content was created for level 80 and tier 4 characters and currently the only character that can get to tier 4 is Iron Man. And at the end of the day that's still only one clear and you're not guaranteed to get all of the materials on your first attempt. So you wanna have multiple characters that can clear the boss. So upgrading your type enhancement for all of your characters or as many of them as possible actually matters. So for all of you guys who are not playing story mode or if you've been playing story mode but just hoarding these tickets, go back and start using these tickets to upgrade the typing on all of your characters that you're using in Giant Boss Raid against Dormammu. The next thing I want to speak to you guys about is universal characters. Currently, the best type of characters to invest in for Giant Boss Raid are actually universal characters like Doctor Doom, and that is because they have no weaknesses. You can use them every single day, and they will do extra damage to the boss. Now, they won't do as much extra damage as the type advantage would but because they don't have any weaknesses for any day they are really good to invest it and then today for example which is the universal day then they'll be doing extra damage on top of that so you want to invest heavily in characters like dr doom scarlet witch super giant Athena, maybe even hella and ghost rider because they will be available to you every single day with no weaknesses another tip that i want to give you guys in regards to making the most out of your energy so you don't have to do multiple runs because these fights take anywhere from five to seven to eight minutes if your characters are not that strong or if your team is not very strong. Now, when you're setting up your team, guys, and this is not a team I would actually use because Wave is not going to buff Moonstone. So I guess I can just move around so I don't give you guys the wrong idea. So this is like more along the line of a team that I would use, but something like this would be better. But the point is, when you're setting up your team, 
you want to make sure that you always use boost points against Dormammu. That's going to save you time and energy, especially if you don't have that many strong characters built. You want to make sure that every time you're going in with at least times two for the reward, so you get more souls of the Faltine. And then if you're in a very strong alliance or if you're playing with very strong people, what you want to do is bring your DPS one support and then try to bring one of these synergy heroes here on your team to hopefully give you additional drops. Today I was having so much difficulty getting that book and it wasn't until I swapped out one of my DPS for one of the synergy heroes that I actually finally got the book. Now I'm not too sure if that's what helped me or after running it 12 times, 11, 12 times, I finally just got lucky but i used the synergy hero and i got the book versus doing it 10 11 times without any of the synergy heroes on my team i didn't get the book so again that's a tip it worked for me today maybe it could work for you if you're having difficulty getting the book hopefully it never takes you guys 10 times playing because that's like 200 plus energy and if you're taking five minutes each time that's almost an hour of play time now the next thing i want to talk to you guys about is very very important and that is about adding instinct to your characters so every character that you're going to be using as a dps for a giant boss raid against Dormammu. If you have an artifact for them, you wanna give them their artifact. And if you can level up the artifact to plus four at the very least, that will help you. If you don't have the specific artifact for the character, give them a random three-star artifact, find out what type of instinct they have. Like in the case of Dr. Doom, right here where the question mark is, it tells me that Dr. Doom's instinct natively is cruelty because he is an absolute demon. So you want to find a level three artifact and give it to, well, it doesn't have to be level three. If you want, you can give it level one, but it gives you more stats if you give it a level three. I'm not going to say go higher than level three, but you want to match the type of instinct that the character has with the artifact and make sure it's the exact same kind. And if at all possible, you want to give them instinct critical rate instinct critical damage or bonus instinct accuracy by one or two or three percent these are ideally the best stats to give if you're using these characters in pve the reason why i say you should give your characters instinct is because it seems like for the second half of the fight instinct damage is what really packs a punch and the reason why i'm saying this is because in the second portion of the fight dormammu actually gives you a buff that increases your instinct damage by 200 percent i didn't actually notice this until today and i'm gonna put a screenshot on screen here and whenever you play against dormammu check the top left hand corner and you'll see that that buff is being applied to you as well so that's why i'm telling you guys to give your characters instinct on their artifact and make sure that it's the right type of instinct so you're getting the full amount from the artifact because that's going to be augmented by 200 percent and for any of you guys who don't believe me in regards to the usefulness of instinct you can just take a look at iron man right here this is the tier 4 stat bump that he's going to be receiving once you tier for him he gets 11k energy attack but just take a look at his instinct it's going up from 889 to 3389 there's no way they would actually give him this much of a bump in instinct if it didn't actually matter for future content so i'm telling you guys right now make sure that you give all of your characters that you're using as a dps in giant boss raid an artifact with the correct type of instinct for them and if you can get it to plus four or plus eight make sure that you do that another tip that i want to give you guys in regards to getting instinct so you do more damage in giant boss raid is actually going into the shield archive as you can see right here you can get free instinct attack crit rate crit damage and all that stuff and i have some of these favorited and you can see i've been actively working towards at least getting the first 30 percent done 
on these archive missions because it's very, very easy to do that and I can get some extra stats. Now this is critical resist. So this is not really increasing my damage at all, but this is increasing my survivability, which might be an issue for some of you guys as well. Right here, as you can see, the first one is giving us instinct dodge. So again, survivability boost. I don't have this one done yet, but it's gonna give me some instinct attack and so on and so forth. So make sure that you jump into the shield archive, see where you get these items. And every time you have some extra energy, just go to these specific locations. Like for example, this one, you don't even have to spend energy. You just have to play the Shang-Chi legendary battle and win. And eventually you'll get a random drop for one of the 10 rings. And if you do that enough times, eventually you'll get some extra accuracy. I think accuracy is the equivalent of ignore dodge for instinct. And we already know how useful ignore dodge is. Now the next set of tips that I'm gonna give you guys, I'm gonna do while I'm in battle. So let me queue up a party here really quickly and then let's jump into it. So I'm gonna talk to you guys while we just body Dormammu here real quick. So start off, you always want to make sure you hug one side of Dormammu and pay attention to the direction that the arrow is pointing and position yourself right behind it so that you don't get hit by that fire wave. Now in the first phase here, he's gonna do what I call the death balls and you wanna watch for where the gap is because it either spawns in the middle of the map or at the very bottom. And if you do not pay attention to where it spawns, you will die. Not too sure why I couldn't um, activate my 5-4 combo there. It's fine. I'm actually going to save the Awakened skill. Okay, this got, we got through this first phase really quickly. So for this second phase here, one mistake that I see a lot of players making is they start attacking right away. See like these guys attacking? You do not want to do that. You actually want to wait until Dormammu's HP fills all the way up to 40 bars and then start attacking. Because although he doesn't show you, he's actually invincible until his HP fills all the way up. And um, if you attack him before his HP fills all the way up, then you're doing no damage. It looks like you're doing damage, but he's not taking any damage. Okay, so right now, we're just going to keep attacking and um, we'll just watch what he does. You want to make sure that that's fire attack that he does, like this one right here. Whenever you see that, this tells you that the next time the arrow is going to be spawning right on that side and you just, just stay behind it pretty much. I don't have a better way. I call that the death wave. So this time the death wave is going to come this way. Um, I was a little too slow, so I got caught in it. Just make sure you're not... Okay, right here. It's going to spawn on this side this, this time. And then it's going to go from right to left. So do not go over to the left side. Because the next time the death wave spawns, it's going to spawn from the right side moving to the left. Okay, so whenever you get sent over here to the, you know, the Shadow Realm or whatever, just make sure you kill this mindless one as quickly as possible so you can go back to um, helping out your teammate or teammates. And do you guys remember how earlier I said there was a buff for increased instinct damage by 200%? That is what I was talking about. Okay, so this right here is one thing that I see... A lot of people getting killed by it. He killed me a few times before I figured it out. There's three portals, one for each of you. So whenever you see this pop up, it means you got to stand in there, right? Stand in it and just wait until Dormammu does that garden of death. And uh, once he does that, you can go back to attacking. Now, these attacks shouldn't kill you. They'll do a decent amount of damage to you, but it shouldn't kill you. So even though it's purple, you don't have to really run away from it. Also, press the co-op button. Like, I know I haven't been pressing it a lot here. is because I'm strong and the people I'm playing with are very strong as well. Okay, so the death beam is going to spawn on the left side, moving right. I was a little distracted. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I should have moved out of the way faster. And then I wouldn't have had to tag, but it's okay. So... 
once you get the hang of um, where the skills are going to spawn and what you need to do to avoid it, it just becomes a DPS check. So somebody's going to get teleported and they're going to have to go kill that mindless one. I think it's random. Some people say it's whoever is doing the most damage gets teleported. I don't know. Sometimes even when I'm not doing the most damage, I get teleported. So I don't know. Maybe he's bugged. But you guys, you guys tell me. Um, one thing I've noticed is that there's an attack that will fear you if you don't have um, invincibility and sometimes I my rotation is a mess because of it all right so we, we got it. it took us five minutes but um we got it done and the, the funny thing about this Dormammu fight is the way how he leaves like he's not defeated he just like got bored and left but uh yeah that's pretty much all that i can offer you guys in terms of tips you want to watch for that fire breath that moves from left to right and right to left and basically your cue to know which direction is going to spawn in is just to look at where the first wave of fire is and then that will tell you that it's going to spawn right there and then it's going to move from that direction to the right or to the left and then you want to watch out for the death wave where you have to stand in those um, portals, you know, the garden of death. And then one, one thing that is pretty much only exclusive for VIP members is you can tag your characters out of the fight to heal, which can definitely make the fight significantly easier for you. Also guys, very, very big tip, okay? Make sure you guys press the co-op button, okay? Press the purple button. John said I absolutely had to tell you guys, press the damn purple button, especially if you are joining a public lobby on your week, because a lot of you guys, your characters do less damage than the co-op skill, believe it or not, <laughs> okay? So guys, we're gonna wrap it up right here. Hopefully these tips helped you. If they did, smash the like button, share the video with a friend. So hopefully we can all play together in public lobbies and it won't be a nightmare. Because if we don't all try our best to improve together, what's gonna happen is everybody's just gonna play with their friends and their alliance members and if you're not in a strong alliance or you don't have very strong friends you're gonna be left out in the dust so the more people who know what they need to do to get better the easier the game mode will become and eventually we can just all go back to joining public lobbies and just slap in Dormammu like we were doing for master mode and Galactus for the past two years so we're gonna wrap it here thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one any future tips I'll share it in another video.